today. We're diving into a fascinating concept in astrophysics known as white holes. Ever heard of them? Well, if you know about black holes, you're halfway there. Let me explain. You see, in general relativity, a white hole is a hypothetical region of space-time. Imagine a cosmic object that you can't enter from the outside. But here's the kicker. Energy, matter, light and information can escape from it. In this way, it's kind of like the reverse of a black hole where nothing can escape. White holes come up in the theory of eternal black holes. Picture a black hole with a twist. In such a scenario, a black hole exists in the future, but a white hole exists in its past. This solution to the Einstein field equations adds a whole new layer of complexity. Uh, but here's a catch. This doesn't apply to black holes formed through gravitational collapse. So, there aren't any observed physical processes that show how a white hole could be formed. Now, let's talk about supermassive black holes. These giants are theoretically predicted to sit at the centre of every galaxy. But what if I told you that some scientists, including the legendary Stephen Hawking, have proposed that these supermassive black holes could spawn supermassive white holes? Depending on the type of black hole solution considered, there are several types of white holes. Take the Schwarzschild black hole, for instance. If a geodesic or the path that a particle follows in space-time comes out of a white hole, it originates from the gravitational singularity it contains. This singularity is a point where the gravitational field becomes infinite. Pretty mind-bending, right? But wait, there's more. If we consider a black hole that possesses an electric charge known as a Reissner-Nordstrom black hole or one with angular momentum, then things get even more fascinating. In such cases, the white hole becomes an exit door of a black hole existing in another universe. This configuration is called a wormhole. Imagine a cosmic tunnel connecting two different points in space-time. It's like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. However, reaching the region inside the white hole is impossible, making its behavior and what might emerge from it completely unpredictable. In this sense, a white hole represents a non-deterministic configuration in the universe. Another example of a non-deterministic configuration is a bare singularity. Unlike a white hole, a bare singularity doesn't have a region that is inaccessible. In its basic conception, the Big Bang can be seen as a naked singularity in outer space, but it doesn't correspond to a white hole. In contrast to white holes, the formation of black holes is well documented. Black holes are born from the remnants of massive stars whose cores contract under immense gravitational force, eventually forming a singularity. This process is dynamic and observable. A massive star evolves and collapses into a black hole. Thus, black holes are not eternal. They have a beginning, a life cycle, and potentially an end. But what about white holes? For a white hole to exist, it must either form through a physical process or be present from the inception of the universe. However, no known astrophysical process can lead to the formation of a white hole. Imposing its existence from the creation of the universe would require assuming a very specific set of initial conditions for which there is no concrete motivation or evidence. In the past, the enormous quantities of radiation emitted by quasars led some scientists to speculate that they might be associated with white holes or continuous matter creation as proposed by the steady-state theory. Quasars, with their incredible luminosity, can be observed from billions of light-years away, making them perfect candidates for such exotic phenomena. However, these ideas have since been abandoned. The observed properties of quasars are now well explained by the presence of accretion disks surrounding supermassive black holes at their centers. The accretion disks' intense gravitational forces and high energy emissions account for the quasar's brightness without invoking white holes. Some researchers have suggested that when a black hole forms, a Big Bang may occur at its core or singularity, creating a new universe that expands outside of the parent universe. This theory implies that our universe could be the interior of a black hole existing within a larger universe. The einstein carton siyama kibble theory of gravity extends general relativity by introducing the torsion tensor, which accounts for the intrinsic angular momentum or spin of matter. According to this theory, the gravitational collapse of a sufficiently compact mass does not lead to a singular black hole. Instead, the repulsive spin-spin interaction at high densities prevents the formation of a singularity. 
the collapsing matter reaches an enormous but finite density and then rebounds, forming a regular Einstein-Rosen bridge or wormhole. On the other side of this bridge is a new, growing baby universe. For observers within this baby universe, the parent universe appears as a white hole. This idea suggests that our observable universe could be the interior of a black hole that exists within a much larger universe. The Big Bang in this context was a non-singular big bounce, a point at which our universe had a finite minimum scale factor. Another intriguing concept is shockwave cosmology, proposed by Joel Smoller and Blake Temple in 2003. They suggested that the Big Bang was an explosion inside a black hole producing the expanding volume of space and matter that includes our observable universe. As the matter density reduces with expansion, this black hole eventually becomes a white hole. A related theory even offers an alternative explanation for dark energy. A 2012 paper argues that the Big Bang itself is a white hole, suggesting that the emergence of a white hole termed a small bang is spontaneous. All matter is ejected in a single pulse, meaning that white holes cannot be continuously observed. Instead, their effects can only be detected around the event itself. The paper even proposed identifying a new group of gamma ray bursts with white holes. Unlike black holes, which form through the well-studied process of gravitational collapse when a massive star exhausts its nuclear fuel, no clear analogous process reliably leads to the production of white holes. However, some intriguing hypotheses have been put forward. One hypothesis suggests that white holes could act as a kind of exit from black holes, with both types of singularities connected by a theoretical wormhole, though it's important to note that, like white holes, wormholes have not yet been observed. When quasars were first discovered, some astronomers speculated that these might be white holes, but this assumption has since been discarded. Another prevalent idea is that white holes would be highly unstable, existing only for a brief moment before collapsing and potentially becoming black holes. This instability could explain why we haven't observed white holes directly. In 2006, astronomers Alan Retter and Shlomo Heller suggested that the anomalous gamma-ray burst, known as GRB 060614, could have been a white hole. This burst defied the typical characteristics of known gamma-ray bursts, sparking interest and debate within the scientific community. The concept of the Big Bang being produced by a supermassive white hole explosion has also been explored. In 2014, researchers Madriz Aguilar, Moreno and Bellini examined this idea within the framework of a five-dimensional vacuum. This hypothesis adds yet another layer to the complex interplay between black holes, white holes and the origins of our universe. Finally, it has been postulated that white holes could be the temporal inverse of black holes, a concept that, while fascinating, remains largely theoretical. At present, very few scientists believe in the real-world existence of white holes, considering them more of a mathematical exercise than a physical reality.